George says he's been coming to this Goodwill to see Taylor for two years now, and he has no plans to stop anytime soon. Oh, what is your message about law and order? It's about law and order. It's this stretch of water does have quite a bit of wildlife in it. They all have an annual economic impact of $27 billion. State officials expect that number to keep growing. Ken Hammer told authorities that his car was traveling northbound on County Road M when a pipe fell off of a truck that was coming the other way and went through the vehicle. Freedom Honor Flight's priority is to take World War II veterans to Washington, D.C. By the end of this year, this block will look very different as Dave and Barbara Scogan begin work on their new development. It's a split-second decision that could have big consequences. You think you're just going to a traffic stop and all of a sudden it changes in a matter of two seconds. The Holman Police Department trains for these shoot or don't shoot situations regularly, but today they gave me the chance to see what their training is like. First, I got a crash course on the use of force. Then I put on a protective vest and took a few practice shots with a fake gun. The first scenario was a simple traffic stop, pulling over a man who was speeding. Stop what you're doing. Put the gun down. Put the, put the gun down on the ground. Put the gun. But things escalated quickly. Put the gun down. No. Oh, he got out of the car really quickly. I, ha I wasn't even to the car yet. Um, pulled out a gun right away. The Holman Police Department is using what's called simunition in these practice guns. It does hurt to be hit by them a little bit, but it certainly makes the drills more realistic. I got hit a few times during the scenarios. I'm shaking a little bit. <laughs> it, it hurt a little bit. It's a little red. The next test had me checking on a man behaving suspiciously near a car. A suspected theft in action. Stop right there, sir. Stop right there, sir. No shots fired, but it could have ended differently. Then he angrily got his cell phone out. You didn't know if that was a gun. And finally, a suicide attempt. Ma'am, you need to put the gun down. Ma'am, please put the gun down. You need to put the gun down. There's really no clear-cut answer on how to exactly handle that. You just have to be well trained. You have to, you know, obviously be educated. You know, watch different scenarios that are out there and be prepared and know what you're going to do before it happens. Holman police say it's not easy, but with enough practice, they can make those decisions with confidence. In Holman, Erin O'Brien, Fox 25, 48 News at nine. Anticipation filled Jackson Correctional Institution as 10 puppies, all four months old, from the same litter of Black Lab and Golden Retriever mixes, checked into prison today for a new adventure. You said a good girl. These inmates will spend the next year raising the puppies and teaching them basic obedience commands. Kandu Canines says it's found lots of success with its prison training program. They do take tremendous pride in the training of the dogs and so you know in a regular obedience class most people are like oh I didn't have time to teach my dog to sit this week and the inmates you know are like show me sit and the dog like runs and does your laundry and cooks your breakfast and come back and sits you know like they do such a great job. After about 12 months the dogs will go back to can do canines for another six months of intense training to learn how to help specific kinds of disabilities like diabetes or seizures. And after a year of bonding, it's not easy for inmates to give them back. They cry. They do cry. But it also helps the prisons. I think it opens up a very different facet of rehabilitation for our offenders. It really gives the offenders, uh, those that are working with the dogs, an opportunity to have a daily responsibility. This, this dog relies on them and they are committed to the dog. Inmate Christopher Wilbanks was excited to meet his new puppy, Peggy. I think she's very exciting little girl. I love her. I like her coat too. For him, raising a puppy was a way to make a positive difference. I've done some wrong things in my life and I want to help as much as I can as I'm in here. Can Do Canines is still looking for a few more volunteers to take these puppies out for the weekend to socialize them and introduce them to things they normally wouldn't see in the prison. These puppies and their new razors are in for a busy year and a fulfilling future. In Black River Falls, Erin O'Brien, WEAU 13 News.
Hundreds marched through Onalaska today to raise awareness for babies. The La Crosse area's March for Babies, benefiting March of Dimes, brought families together in support of the national organization. I was at today's event and learned more about how it's helping babies in our area beat the odds. Plenty of purple filled Rowe Park in Onalaska today. A Florida man is hospitalized and arrested after crashing a stolen semi in Dunn County. Investigators say 50-year-old Todd Fine was arrested for his fourth OWI and operating without owner's consent early this morning around 4.30 a.m. It happened on County Highway B near Menominee. According to State Patrol, they say they saw a semi sparking and tried to pull it over. That's when Fine accelerated to 90 miles per hour in a 45 mile per hour zone. Fine then lost control of the semi and rolled. Troopers say he was hospitalized with minor injuries and was then taken to the Dunn County Jail. <music> President Donald Trump is marking his 100th day in office with an executive order that opens an investigation into possible trade agreement violations and abuses. Mr. Very Trump powerful. signed the order today in Hampton Township, Pennsylvania. The president was joined at a manufacturing facility by Secretary of Commerce Wilbur Ross. The executive order will allow for a systematic evaluation of World Trade Organization agreements. The president signed the order before his rally tonight after deciding to skip the White House Correspondents' Dinner. No president has missed the event in 36 years since President Reagan was not able to attend after he was shot in 1981. A senior White House official has said the scheduling of the rally had nothing to do with the president avoiding the gathering of journalists. The White House staff is also boycotting the dinner in a show of solidarity with Mr. Trump. Loved ones, friends, family and complete strangers gathered today all in support of one very special little girl. Today was the Taya Tuff fundraiser at Mount Simon Park in Eau Claire. Money was raised today for three-year-old Taya Madison, who was diagnosed at 11 weeks old with an inoperable brain tumor. The fundraiser had raffle items, food, t-shirts, and baseball. Taya's family says that it's hard to put into words what the community support means to them. I can't believe how this community has pulled together to be Taya Tough. A lacrosse woman is getting ready to debut a new play featured in San Diego. The American History Theater is sponsoring Rachel Carter's play, Speaking Out, Why I Stand, at the Women's Museum of California in July. Her play focuses on sexual abuse of military members by their superiors and peers. Carter created the play in 2013 by pulling together stories and poems of assaults she and others endured in the military. Still ahead, what chance of rain can we expect to close out the weekend? But first, we'll show you how these middle schoolers are exploring outside the classroom through robots. You're watching Fox 25 48 News at 9. Fox 25 48 News at 9 will continue in a moment.